Okay, we're going to have a look now at a very exciting game that was played in 2003 during the Icarus Open tournament. The white player is uh, Lekic from Lithuania and with black pieces uh, is playing Bakinas and that's a Greek player and he likes to play the Sicilian Dragon defense so that's why I've chosen this game it's a very interesting game. We've seen our first these moves that we have seen before in other videos. Queen to d2, knight to c6, and the opposite castle. Castle's queen side by white. And in this position, one of the most popular moves, and that's the one that was played in this game also, is the move d5. So black tries to open the center here. e takes d5 was played. Knight takes d5. And now knight takes c6 b takes c6 and the according to the theory one of the best moves is bishop to d4 and that's what white played here and different moves have been tried in this position for example the move e5 and another option is to take on d4 but in this game we see another possibility and that's to take on c3 knight takes c3 was played Queen takes d3, bishop h6, check. Now there is, as you probably can see, a little trick here, and that is that white cannot play king to b1 because then e5 simply wins at once because the rook on d1 is undefended, so the bishop cannot leave and is attacked. But that's just a little trick, and of course, players from this level see those kind of things, so the move bishop e3 was played. Now black took on e3, and after queen takes e3, we see the meaning of this, um, let's say the main idea of this um, way of playing by black, and that is developing the queen to b6. So now black can easily develop the rest of the pieces, for example the rook, the a rook to b8 later, and the bishop to, to e6, and then we have a position that is quite uh, uh, common for, for, for black players who play the Sicilian Dragon. What happens now is that white didn't exchange queens. Now he took on e6 and black played bishop to e6. So more or less engaging this uh, white queen and also threatening the pawn on a2. White continued developing by bishop to e3 and then black took on a2. Now the first thought that m many people have when they see moves like bishop takes a2 is what about b3 engaging this this uh, this bishop on a2 trapping it but then of course, white uh, black can, can sacrifice on b3, c takes b3, queen takes b3, and now this king is so vulnerable because it's so in such an open space that after, for example, queen to c5, rook a to b8, the white king can get into trouble. So that's why, in the position after bishop takes a2, that's this one last move, bishop takes a2. Uh, white didn't take, white didn't play b3, but he decided to continue with his own attack, or let's say to set up his own attack by playing h4. Rook to e8, the queen goes to a3, and now the black queen goes to e3, checking the black king. Rook d2 was played, and now bishop to d5. So as we look now at the position we can say that the opening has been very successful for black. All the white, almost all the, the black pieces are very active and this rook can be activated easily by putting it on b8 and then all the pieces of black are active and oh by the way if you hear this maybe I don't know if you heard this noise on the background uh, it's because children are playing on the streets with the firecrackers because uh, 
yeah, it's it's the last day of the year today, so don't worry about that if you hear it on the background. Uh, anyway, what I was saying is that White still has to uh, develop a attacking plan, and um, an attack, and, and Black already has all his pieces activated, almost all his pieces, and the material is equal, so Black didn't have even to sacrifice anything, not not a pawn, not an exchange, anything, to get active play for all his pieces. The game continued now with <coughs> h5, and Black played a rook to e5, a, a beautiful way of centralizing the rook and also activating it for a possible later rook to a5, rook to a1. c4 was played, bishop goes to e6, and then h takes on g6, h takes g6, queen e7, and now black must be careful. Black played the, the good move, king to g7, and that is important because otherwise the white queen could go to f6 and then we see suddenly things can become dangerous for black because of rook h1 checkmate. So that's why in this position black understood that safety goes first, king to g7 and now there is no no strong attack for, for white anymore. The game continues with bishop to e4 and now we see a beautiful move rook to a5. So that's the purpose of this rook d5 move. Black threatens a deadly check on a1 and it seems like there is no uh, way of saving the game for, for white. He tried king to c2 but now was played rook to b8. The last piece that was not already involved in the attack is involved now bishop to d3 and now a beautiful sacrifice rook takes b2 check king takes b2 and queen takes on d2 and after bishop c2 the last move of the game was queen to d4 and here white resigned because he's going to be checkmated soon for example king to c1 the rook a1 check the only possibility is to put the bishop in between, but then queen to c3, king d1, and now this one, this bishop falls here, and after two moves we see this mate pattern, king to f1, and then the queen can checkmate here on c1. So let's have a look again at this in a quick way, at this game, we see this Sicilian dragon and we see the, this um, idea of after black plays d5 then he tries this option of taking on c3 queen takes c3, bishop h6 check and then after this exchange queen to b6 is the important move preparing the developing of all the pieces also this one and this pawn on e7 is taken but the developing of black goes further and black activates his pieces and puts all the arrows directed to the white king. You see all these this open lines here as we see in many Sicilian dragon games these open lines on the queen side are so favorable for, uh, for black because it, they can be used uh, in the attack. And now this rook maneuver that's very interesting. King to g7, safety, and then bringing the rook to the a file. And now rook b8 is the last piece that is used for the attack. And the finishing blow is this rook sacrifice. And after this, the white king is helpless and will be checkmated. So, I hope you enjoyed this video and, uh, well, I wish you all a very, very beautiful 2008 and I will certainly come back with more and more uh, videos in this next new year. So, um, I hope you keep watching and uh, enjoy the videos. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.